uh, we have with us Mr. Vikas Bhatia, MD Rico Industries Limited. And uh, uh, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Pranil. Uh, the first question, sir, is with respect to uh, uh, 2020 was not a good year for everybody because of COVID. So how do you see industry trends unveiling in 2021? Okay, yeah, that's a very, very uh, uh, interesting question because uh, clearly the question which is there on every industry leader's mind is how would uh, 2021 un unfurl? after the COVID, um, you know, uh, induced uh, shutdowns and COVID induced uh, recession. So the good news is that the Indian economy is looking very robust. Uh, demand has picked up from various sectors and certain sectors which were resilient to the recession were performing even through the lockdown, such as food, pharmaceuticals and uh, intermediate chemicals. Um, the industries which were hard hit uh, aviation, hospitality, and uh, and some related uh, industries to those. But overall, the forecast for the Indian economy is robust. And similarly, for the chemical industry, uh, we see a, a huge growth opportunity because of the fact that, uh, you know, the demand for both uh, bulk chemicals and specialty chemicals is continuing to grow. And that will fuel the growth for the entire industry. So uh, out of the 5,000 installations that you have completed in the last 45 years, how many st installations are related to chemical, petrochemical, gas, energy, agrochemical, and pharmaceutical in 2020? So in 2020, uh, so on an average, uh, we are doing uh, 300 plus installations in a year. And uh, typically 40 to 50% of this business is uh, you know, generated from industries of uh, chemical, petrochemical, and we have worked with several big players, uh, medium scale players and uh, small players as well. Uh, and depending on the needs, we have provided different kind of installations, uh, both in terms of uh, grinding, uh, powder conveying and dust collection or air pollution control as we call it. So yeah, around 40%. So the number would be around anywhere between 100 to 120. And, and, and how many of them uh, uh, gets completed in a year or so? So typically the project, the timeline depends on the complexity, uh, but we would say that uh, projects which we execute typically take anywhere between three months to six months. Uh, some go beyond six months, some can be done within three months, but uh, typically the time frame for execution would uh, range in the period of three to six months. And so uh, companies which have, uh, you know, placed orders uh, in the beginning of last year, uh, the execution has been uh, happening. And uh, because of this, uh, we have not faced any revenue uh, shortfall. Uh, we are continuing to hold revenue numbers as we had done for last year. And we expect that now the momentum will uh, further grow and we should be able to uh, accelerate our momentum of closing the uh, order execution. In, in 2020, you have added uh, three new partners, uh, TCAM, RSVP, and ETIA. Right. How, how have these partnerships helped the company in terms of solution promising that you have been doing? Sure. So while, of course, uh, we have added these partnerships in 2020, a lot of time was lost because of the pandemic and lockdowns. Um, however, in terms of the overall capability to serve our customers, it has definitely improved uh, our overall solutioning capability. So let's start with the uh, TCAM. So TCAM is a Spain-based uh, organization which has developed solutions uh, for VOC abatement, uh, which means whatever volatile uh, oil compounds are coming out of your processes uh, to, to exhaust them before we release the air into the atmosphere. Uh, those solutions will be very helpful where, wherever the uh, industry processes generating any kind of volatile compound. So for example, oil and gas. So any kind of uh, oil, which uh, gas, which needs to be uh, flared up uh, can be passed through the uh, RTO solutions, which TKM has to offer. So this way, uh, apart from dust control, we now also have solutions for POC abatement, uh, which is what uh, TKM has to provide. 
Similarly, RSBP is a global player in providing uh, fire and explosion safety devices. So most of the chemicals and petrochemicals have a certain uh, nature which is explosive or uh, subject to fire and, and those risks are always present. Now containing those risks is important for any industry uh, and we have seen several uh, safety related incidents also happen and this will help uh, you know, reduce the overall uh, risk which are there in such processes. And as far as ETI is concerned, it is primarily into uh, the product which we have tied up is for steam sterilization. It is more relevant for food products where there are pests and those pests needs to be eliminated using uh, you know, steam sterilization as a process. So I feel that uh, since Rico caters to several industries apart from chemicals, uh, this uh, solution also will be very useful to our customers in the spice and the food business. Uh, however, the, the previous two business, uh, previous two collaborations which we have entered into are very relevant for the chemical, petrochemical and uh, related industries. I would request if you can share your revenue and profitability numbers of last year and what's the forecast for 2022-21. Both on revenue and profitability numbers. So uh, I cannot disclose the numbers uh, fully because we are a private limited company and those numbers are not in the public domain. However, I could share that in this financial year, we are expected to grow very uh, at a modest level, and that's because we had consciously understood the impact of the uh, lockdown and the pandemic. So we have been uh, taking orders very cautiously, and wherever we feel that the liquidity uh, will be ensured while executing those orders, we have been uh, choosing those. So this year we'll record probably about 5% growth uh, with profit margins more or less intact as what we had seen uh, previous year. However, FY21-22, we are forecasting a huge growth and we are already uh, having sufficient uh, good inquiries from the customers, which uh, give us the confidence that we will be able to achieve uh, more than 30% growth over this year. And what is the reason for the growth in uh, FY2021 and 2022? Uh, so 21-22 FY, the growth would be because uh, one, there was a pent up demand, which uh, now will get uh, filled up. So organizations which had put their capital expansion plans, uh, CapEx plans on hold uh, are now coming back. And second thing is Indian economy is still, uh, you know, uh, going to grow because the government uh, is also pushing hard for local manufacturing and also uh, working out various schemes to promote industry and India is a manufacturing destination. So I feel that the investments both from the private sector and the support from the government both for uh, infrastructure and non-infrastructure related areas uh, would definitely give a lot of boost to investments and that is the reason we are also confident that we'll see a huge growth in the uh, coming uh, year. Uh, sir, what portion of your revenue comes from outside India and what comes from within India? And what's your forecast for the next financial year? So yes, uh, Rico as an organization on an average gets between 10 to 15% of its revenue from export markets. However, this percentage is set to increase as we have consciously also focused on uh, growth in the export markets, in the overseas markets. And we have been participating in various international uh, forums, uh, conferences, and uh, you know trade fairs. Unfortunately, because of this pandemic, all the trade fairs have been suspended for almost a year. Uh, however, in a virtual forum, in a digital forum, we are uh, you know doing a lot of push, and we expect that this will also convert into increase in the overseas uh, sales. So we expect that in the coming financial year, close to 20% of the revenue will come from uh, international sales. And which countries uh, you are uh, very active? So uh, we are largely focusing on the Southeast Asia and the Middle East market. Uh, we also evaluating if Africa market provides us the opportunity, but neighboring countries uh, like Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Nepal, uh, we have been doing a lot of business. Uh, we have done a lot of uh, business in 21, 2021 itself. And we are expecting that these markets will continue to provide a lot of uh, growth opportunities even in the coming year. We also are looking at uh, Southeast Asian markets, uh, including Thailand, uh, Malaysia, and Philippines. 
and then uh, the middle east entire gulf market also because that's a major petrochemical market and we have several clients whom we have done work for over there i think we also expect that business to grow further uh, please uh, sir specify your plans for 2021 and any plans of adding manpower oh yeah in fact uh, in this uh, financial year uh, starting from uh, april 20 we already have added 80 people to our organization uh, we recently hired also 12 fresh engineers from colleges so we continue to expand and uh, going further we still have aggressive ex- expansion plans so we would be still adding in 2120 20 to another 80 to 100 people to our organization in different functions including sales engineering and execution uh, thank you vikas ji for speaking to icr thank you thanks. professor thanks